Welcome to the book of Exodus. We're in Exodus 32 today, verses 9 and 10. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, and behold, they are an obstinate people. Now then let me alone that my anger may burn against them, that I may destroy them, and I will make of you a great nation. This is a really pivotal uh, item here in this chapter and in this sequence of chapters, pivotal in the whole book. God is ready to remove himself from these people, these obstinate, weird, uh, idol-worshiping, corrupted people. He tells Moses, I have seen these people. In other words, yeah, I've, got, I've kind of done the full analysis. I know what these people are made of, and they, they really have failed. Uh, they are not faithful. You know, I made a covenant with them. Uh, they've been unfaithful to me. And so that's, that's true, by the way. The divine analysis is correct. But when he says, let me alone, like what? Like Moses could do anything to stop it from happening? Like he's God and you're Moses, and what, what could you do? But this was actually kind of a, a rhetorical invitation to Moses to intercede. And then he puts in, he gives them the test. You know, by the way, I'll just destroy them and I'll make a great nation of you. This would be abandoning the covenant with Abraham and uh, making Moses kind of like, you know, Abraham number two. Abraham uh, will start a new nation using you. So here we have this, uh, Moses must have been furious with the people. God is obviously furious with the people. The people are full of uh, apostasy right here. And God says, let me alone. But that was also really God inviting Moses to intercede. And then he has this piece of the test. By the way, I'll make of you a mighty nation. So if there was anything self, uh, if there was any pride like, uh, hey, hey, that's a pretty good idea, you know, maybe Moses start to think about, well, maybe we should make a new nation starting with me, you know, and my family. Uh, that was might have been a temptation there, but Moses rises above it. Moses immediately intercedes. He says, ah, no, please, Lord. And we'll look at his argument here coming up. Uh, he's going to argue against this. Let's not do this. Here's why. So uh, I love that Moses was selfless unselfish here. He was willing to put himself on the line, and he's going to rise up now, and he's going to resist this idea that God has put out there. God invited him to intercede, and now Moses is going to intercede. And again, Moses is kind of a prototype or an archetype. He is the preview of Jesus, if you want to say it that way. And so by interceding for God's people, he's previewing Jesus' high priestly ministry, his ultimate high priestly ministry, uh, Jesus is our intercessor and our mediator, too. So anyway, very interesting pieces here. Lots of stuff at play. The people who ignore the Old Testament and they ignore the book of Exodus and just read stuff from the New Testament, they're getting some good stuff in the New Testament, but you need the whole of the Bible. That's why God gave us a whole Bible. So here we're learning more and more.